In a bustling London street, James Bowen crims his heart out to the passing crowd. Sadly, no one takes notice, not even with an offering of coins. The only response comes from a well-meaning stranger who gives him an unfinished box of sandwiches for sustenance. This is where our movie begins, in the city streets with our protagonist homeless and struggling for attention. During the nighttime, James experiences hunger pangs and resorts to reluctantly rummaging through garbage bins to consume some leftover food. Afterwards, as he searches for a place to stay, he unexpectedly encounters his drug-addicted friend, Baz, who asks him for information about the closest narcotics supplier. However, as James has recently stopped using drugs, he responds by stating that he is unaware of any dealers before walking away. Subsequently, James proceeds to enter a restaurant and purchases a serving of food, Regrettably, upon tallying the coins in his pocket, he realizes that the amount is inadequate to pay for his meal. He proceeds to offer the restaurant proprietor the option of singing a song for the patrons in exchange for the remaining money. Nonetheless, the discourteous proprietor discards the food into a sink and indignantly demands that James vacate his establishment. Dejected about the current state of his life, James aimlessly wanders through the deserted streets, searching for a secure location to spend the night. Unexpectedly, James encounters Baz once more, who is seated inside a vehicle. It is later revealed that the car belongs to a businessman who had parked it but inadvertently left its doors unlocked. In view of the inclement weather, James joins Baz inside the car without any reservations. Additionally, James ingests a minor quantity of narcotics to help him forget his distressing day. The ensuing morning, as both James and Baz remain in the car, the proprietor arrives and becomes irate. While Baz miraculously extricates himself from the car and absconds, James appears to be unconscious. At the sight of this, the car owner is stricken with fear and quickly dials for an ambulance to rush James to a nearby hospital. Thankfully, it wasn't too serious of a situation and after several hours he reawakens. Val, his emergency social contact and rehabilitation consultant, confronts him while he's resting. She is enraged that James has consumed a prohibited drug as well as disregarded the medicines prescribed to him. He offers her an overflowing apology in response, swearing it won't happen again. After being dismissed from the hospital, James meets Val at her office to discuss his new treatment. She prescribes an updated dose of methadone and firmly reminds him that he must come in for a visit every two weeks. With a heavy heart, James leaves to return to the streets and resume singing. Val is determined that he will find safer accommodation soon, she immediately talks with her senior about the issue and thankfully, they agree on providing him a room so he can get away from undesirable characters. Val joyously conveys the excitement to James, informing him that he is now capable of living in a suitable apartment. Yet despite this good news, she cautions James about adhering strictly to his rehabilitation plan for it remain intact. In the evening, while James was bathing, he heard a peculiar sound coming from the kitchen. Apprehensive yet determined to find out what it could be, he hastily wrapped a towel around his waist and grabbed an old shoe for protection before heading into the kitchen. To his amazement, sitting beside his box of cereal was a small brown kitten. When James noticed the famished cat searching for sustenance, he became profoundly moved and promptly fed it some milk. Furthermore, allowing it to stay in his home overnight, he even serenaded the feline with a heartwarming melody. The next day, James embraced his mission and began walking with the cat door to door around the neighborhood in search of its rightful owner. Unfortunately, none of them were able to take it in reluctantly forcing him to leave it on the streets, but not without hope that one day maybe soon enough, it will find its way home. Afterward, James begins his standard routine of singing on the streets. Sadly, an aged gentleman finds it irritating and commands him to leave. As he is collecting his items to go, all at once he spots Jack his father across the street and dashes over to embrace him. This reunion unveils that after being replaced by Hillary, who also detests James's existence as his dad's wife, James was abandoned by his family members. As they were speaking, Hillary suddenly appeared and pulled Jack away, declaring that James would never be invited to the Christmas festivities. But before leaving, Jack handed some money over to James and suggested he consider dining with them. 
When James finally comes home, he is surprised to find the same cat in front of his house. He carefully examines it and realizes that Bob, as Betty suggested, was covered with fresh cuts and bruises from an apparent altercation. Instantly concerned for its well-being, James contacts his neighbor, a passionate animal lover Betty who suggests taking him immediately to the nearest vet clinic. After this, James raced to the clinic and invested his entire savings on drugs for Bob. As a result, he missed his appointment with Val. When he returned home, James attempted unsuccessfully to give Bob the medication himself. Finally giving up hope, James took him to Betty in search of help, luckily she had volunteered at vet clinics multiple times before and was able to administer the medicines with ease. Betty opens up to James and vehemently expresses her disdain for drugs and their users. In response, he deceives her by claiming that he is a musician instead of revealing his true profession. The following day, James paid Val a visit at her office to apologize for failing to appear at the arranged gathering. He then started talking about his beloved feline and how he was building a more profound connection with Betty. Despite this, Val is not sure if James has sufficiently recovered to manage the responsibility of owning a cat and having a girlfriend. She proposes that he prioritize self-care above all else and remain single for now. Encouraged by Val, James decides to let the cat go free. To his surprise and delight, Bob follows him as he boards a bus, everyone on board marvels at the charming feline while one of them even provides James with shoelaces to use as a makeshift leash. After disembarking the bus, James hoisted Bob onto his shoulders and proceeded towards their normal haunt. Unanticipatedly, a huge throng had amassed to witness him perform. The audience rewarded him with generous tips that quickly accumulated into his highest collection yet. Needless to say, James was elated by this newfound fame and appreciation due in no small part to Bob's charming antics. His heartstrings tugging, James decides to remain with Bob and purchase the right food for him. Suddenly, Baz appears while he is seeking a place to perform and requests some money in order to buy sustenance. Witnessing his friend's miserable existence, without hesitation James hands over an offering of cash before departing. His performance captures an even wider audience than before. An elderly woman, who recently knitted a scarf in memory of her late cat, gives it to Bob as a token of appreciation along with some cat food. Later in the day, James and Betty unexpectedly ran into each other. In spite of her dietary choices being vegan, Betty invited him to dinner at her home which he accepted. To his surprise, they had a riotous time together. On his journey back to home he spotted Baz crumpled up on the pavement unconscious. Without hesitation, he urgently pleads with the people nearby to call an ambulance for Baz. Tragically, it is already too late, James discovers that his friend has succumbed to a drug overdose and is overwhelmed by sadness. After his visit to Betty's home, James learns how her brother tragically overdosed on drugs and died. This experience fuels an even deeper hatred in Betty of those who use narcotics and has a profound effect on James, motivating him further to stay away from these addictive substances. Baz's sudden death reinforces this notion for both parties that it is important to remain sober if they want the best shot at a healthy life. When James meets up with Val again, he expresses his urgent desire to give up narcotics and pleads with her to lower his methadone dosage. Betty cautions Val to proceed with caution and not rush quitting narcotics, as that could be detrimental for his mental and physical health. She nonetheless reassures him that if he remains abstinent from drugs while sticking to the prescribed methadone dosage, she will soon consider decreasing it. As James and Betty enjoy their special Christmas, James takes the opportunity to ask her on a date and make a lifelong commitment. Later that night, he decides it is time to visit his father for the holiday and brings along a bottle of wine as an offering. With love in his heart, he sets off ready for what lies ahead. Regrettably, the family continues to view him as an addict regardless of his long history of sobriety. To make matters worse, even his young stepsisters display no respect towards him. As James conversed with his dad, Bob erupted from his lap and began to sprint around, causing a costly flower vase as well as other items to smash. Hillary then exploded in anger at both father and son, consequently, James was ultimately kicked out of the house. 
The following day while busking in front of a substantial crowd, disaster struck when an unanticipated pooch urinated on James' guitar bag. His temper flared, and he launched into a scuffle with the dog's proprietor. Eventually, police officers arrived to apprehend him for causing mayhem in public areas. Thankfully, the CCTV images serve as verification that James is innocent, and Val arrives at the police station to help him out. Despite this reprieve from jail time, James must remain unable to perform in public for six months. Val recognizes that James hasn't taken his daily dosage of methadone, and so she admonishes him to begin taking it if he wishes to keep Bob by his side. Desperate not to lose the only companion in his life, James hastily dashes over to the local clinic where he duly consumes the medicine. Unaware, Betty enters the same clinic as James and discovers his true identity of a heroin addict. Fueled by fury, she screams at him for lying to her and destroying their trust that was once so strong. Bereft of his primary income source and partner, James reluctantly returns home. His luck changes when he visits a newspaper company to apply for the position of paper seller, miraculously, he is hired by their manager in an instant. The manager reminds him that it's essential to restrict himself within the boundaries of his assigned region while selling papers. In no time at all, James begins peddling the newspapers and soon attracts hordes of strangers who want pictures taken with Bob. As James saunters near a different newspaper stand, a few patrons approach him and purchase his paper. To commemorate the event, they ask to take an image of Bob with them. Unfortunately for James, his rival vendor spots him vending newspapers in their vicinity and promptly reports it to the news office. Subsequently, he is forbidden from selling papers for one month due to this misdeed. Subsequent to this encounter, James attempts to reconcile with Betty. Regrettably, she remains enraged and spurns his advances. Worn out from such a long journey and depleted of funds within days yet determinately foregoing his own needs, he buys food for Bob instead. As he traveled to multiple locations where the police wouldn't find him, he began performing music along the roadside, unfortunately for him, Betty encountered him and out of fear that his probation would be affected as a result of this reckless behavior, she declared an end to their relationship. A month later, James was back on his paper route. Then one fateful day while out selling papers, a gruff woman asked to buy Bob from him an offer which he respectfully declined. In response, the two dogs nearby began threateningly barking at Bob and sent him scampering away in fear. Though desperate to catch up with the trembling pup, all of James' attempts proved fruitless. For the upcoming days, he feels isolated and despondent since Bob still doesn't return. He even briefly considered returning to drugs before managing to talk himself out of it at the 11th hour. Finally, Bob returns home. When they reunite, James experiences an epiphany that he is now ready to take the crucial step towards healing quitting methadone. The next day, James stops by Val's place and requests for her to reduce his methadone dosage. She consents to his request and cautions him about the impending withdrawal symptoms. Subsequently, he informs Betty of a drug detox plan tailored just for himself that is ready to be set in motion. Upon hearing this, Betty was overjoyed and the two of them reconciled. To show her appreciation, she offered to bring meals right to James' room as a gesture of kindness. After a grueling period of withdrawal symptoms, James was eventually able to kick his drug habit. When he visited Betty shortly afterwards, however, he learned that she was about to leave town, but not without giving him her new address in the hopes that they would reunite soon. After viewing the remarkable footage of James and Bob as they worked together, a book-writing business reached out to James in order to collaborate on an inspiring narrative about their enduring friendship. Later, James is brought to the head of the writing team who rewards him with a brand new laptop for his job. After that, he eagerly travels to his father's home and proudly shares the news that he has broken free from drugs. Jack realized his mistake and profusely apologized for having left James behind. The movie culminates with the grand book launch party, where an enormous crowd welcomes James with cheers of support. Val, Jack, and Betty congratulate him heartily as they witness this momentous achievement in his life. James was deeply appreciative of those who aided him in his turbulent life journey. The film culminates with both James and Bob engaging in their favorite pastime by performing on the streets for passers-by.